Right, let's get it out of the box. Oh, straight away, it's giving me Chris Vetter and Honey Badger, yes. Anyway, first, let's see what we get in terms of accessories. Okay, you get two little rail attachments. Oh, look at the size of this thing. A very long Allen key, a KWA sticker, and I believe the rest will be some form of instruction manual. No, nope, this is not an instruction manual. And it's not in English, so let's forget about that bit. Ah, here we go, here's the instruction manual. Nice, and you can see the two variants right there. This is the one I'm unboxing today. It's the TK45C operator's manual. Looks pretty decent. Yeah, pretty. Oh, that's not bad at all. It even shows you how to swap the spring out. Nice. And before we get the main attraction out first, oh, this is almost coming out by itself. Look at that mag. Even this smells of Chris Vector. <laughs> right. Let's get it out. I don't think there's anything else other than the main piece. Would you look at this? Oh my gosh. Today's video is sponsored by SwitAirsoft.com. Now you know how I run this channel. Before I do anything else, let's complete that picture. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh, absolutely loving this. Seriously is a love child <laughs> of the Honey Badger and the Chris Vector. And it really, really is smelling of Titanfall as well. I don't know what, maybe it's just this angled bit right there. If you check out some of the weapons on Titanfall, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I'm guessing the reason why it reminds me of a honey badger is straight away, look at the stock. Very similar in style, and I'm guessing the battery space is gonna be just as restricted as it was in the honey badger, but we will see. What else? Ah, yes. Both have that sort of floating barrel design and look, they both have that suppressor look at the end. Awesome. And of course, the Chris Vector. <laughs> Need I say any more? Okay, so starting at the very rear of this piece, very study grippy butt pad right there. And of course, you have your three position stock. So when it's closed, that's position one. And when you press this right here, that releases your stock and that gives you position two. Pressing it again, gives you position three. However, if you press it one more time, takes it right off. And that's where you're presented with your battery compartment and this is where you're presented with your little fuse box and your Tamiya connection and if you look down in your battery compartment you can see a screw head if you remove that that will reveal another compartment where you will be able to adjust your FPS using this tool but I'm not going to do that just yet because I really need to see what this thing does out of the box and as we're here, we might as well look at the battery situation and see if we're gonna have any difficulties getting certain types of batteries down there. Now, I've got a pet box style battery here. You can get them slightly smaller. So this is larger than you would normally have. Will this fit? Let's have a quick look. Okay, just about, it's only just about protruding at the top and move the cables out of the way look um, can it go in hang on let me just try it another way if it can go in flat this way nope nope that is too big to go in that way so it has to go in at an angle and it only just gets in there and I'm not too sure if this cap is gonna like that 
And then of course you've got to look at getting all this cabling and all that paraphernalia down there too. So I suggest that's going to be a bit of a squeeze. However, what about this? This is a lot longer. It's an 11.1 LiPo, okay. Now, obviously if I try and put it on this section here, way too long. However, just move the cables back and there is a longer space. Hopefully this will fit. Oh, brilliant, look at that. So that basically fits all the way down there. And there, look, all the cabling and all the plugs fit in there nicely. Now, for the purpose of this video, as I just showed you, I've got an 11.1 volt LiPo. I have seen on certain uh, websites that it's recommended that you use 7.4. But I have seen some people run an 11.1 in this bad boy with no issues. But for this video, we're just gonna run with the 11.1. <laughs> this thing looks so sweet. So let's continue with the features before I actually test it. So we've done the stock area. I'll just show you right here. You've got your rear sling point on either side. And then if we go down towards this texturized grip not only on the sides but also on the back and on the front and from what I can see yep if you look on the bottom that's your access to your motor you can even see it down there and then you have your hand guard there moving up you've got your trigger guard there with your trigger and then you have your fire selector switch. Now the cool thing about this particular model, the TK45, okay, both versions, it's so friendly towards lefties and righties. So, fire selector switch, safe, semi, full auto, but it's on both sides. Let's just flip that back. And then you've got this rather large and handy mag release. Again, on both sides. And then moving on up, you've got your bolt release. And yes, you guessed it. <laughs> it's on both sides, but of a different design. Right there. As we move towards the top area of the TK45, you've got your charging handle. Let's just have a quick listen. Hmm, snappy. But can it lock back? Because although it's a mock bolt, it does reveal your hop-up adjustment. So, on this side, let me just show you how you would lock it back. You simply push that up and your bolt stays open. And there's your hop-up. Now to release the bolt, you simply push down on that. But note, I've moved the stop back one position just to give you a bit more room so you get easier access. However, even with the stock closed, you can still get to it, but you have a slight obstruction by these bars right here. And watch the bolt close. Nice. Now I must admit, when you release the bolt, the sound of that bolt yeah, a bit weak. So let me just show you on the other side with the paddle bolt lock and release right here. So if you just push on the bottom bit right there, let go of your charging handle, you will see that once again, your bolt stays open. I'm now gonna release the bolt, have a listen again. <laughs> it's a very small click, but your bolt is now closed. So continuing on the top, you've got these nice PTS flip up sights and you can change the sight picture. So if you look right there, you've got a large peephole right on the top. And if I just show you on this side, simply by pushing that up, you can change your sight picture. And of course, you can adjust it for windage. And then across the top, you've got this generous amount of rail space for such a compact weapon. And then of course, we get to the front sight. And just like the rear sight, you can flip it up and it can be adjusted for elevation using the wheel right here. Take a look at this front post. Nice. 
Nice. Awesome. But of course, you do again have this generous amount of rail space, so you can put any optic of your choice. And then of course, right here, you've got a nice gripped panel for your hand. And at the front here, you've got this very cool looking suppressor and just take a look inside of that key mod system we have. You can see you're floating out a barrel. Now, if you look closely to the design, you can actually see that this whole front section can be separated, which leads me to the logical conclusion that you can swap this out and turn this into the longer version. And I literally cannot see why you can't do that. Even the rail system is separate there. You can see on the top that it changes. And on the bottom right there, look. Awesome. But for me, this is a perfect size. Right, let's have a quick look at the mag, then I'll show you all the wonderful markings on this, and then we're gonna give this bad boy a test. We're gonna chrono it, see what we get. We're gonna do an accuracy test. Yeah, getting pretty excited for this. So, as I said earlier, you can release the mag from either side. So we'll do it from here, and you can see exactly how that works. Simply press that in and watch this whole system there rise. See that? And out comes your mag. So the specs on this mag, first and foremost, it's 120 rounds. And then what I do like is that on the mag itself, you've got the same sort of features that you would find on the grip. So right here, you've got your texturized panels and you've got these serrations on the front. And another thing I like is look at that follower right there. The way it protrudes outwards tells me that we should be able to achieve every single BB being fired from the TK45. And of course, it's a full polymer mag. <laughs> that never gets old. Right, let's have a look at all the trades. Right now, this thing ain't no good if it doesn't work. So let's test this. This is the very first time I'm gonna be firing this. So let's put it straight onto semi-auto. Listen up. Very nice, very snappy. Let's go straight into full auto. Oh! Now that sounds nice. Now, because I've done this so many times with so many different airsoft weapons, I'm gonna guess that's at least about 17 to 19 or 20 rounds per second, but we will see imminently. Nice. Okay, let's get the mag ready. Three, three, eight. Three, three, five. 334.6 334.6 again, nice 335.3 334.335.3 One more 334.6 And that, my airsoft friends 
is absolutely perfect for CQB gameplay. And the consistency is amazing. Right, let's hit that fun switch. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! That sounded awesome. Look, 23 rounds per second. More than I expected. And the FPS maintained itself up there. That is awesome. I'm just showing you this still shot right here with my finger right up against the target just to give you an idea how tight all of those shots were. Oh yeah! Do you know what? Sometimes these copyright laws, they're a good thing. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes they can be annoying because right now it would have been so awesome for a pair of dark glasses and something else <laughs> to appear on screen and a few seconds of that famous Dr. Dre beat. That's how gangster that was. <laughs> now, just before I go into what I like about this and what I don't like about it, there is something else that is not too dissimilar, well, certain aspects of it is not too dissimilar to this TK45. So, when this bad boy arrived via parcel force, Sweet Airsoft also included something else. This bad boy. Now, don't be thinking it's just a combat machine. Uh-uh. This is the ARP-9. And I'll be doing a separate video for this. Ha-ha, <laughs> look at this. I'll be doing a separate video for this very soon. So apparently if I turn it clockwise, that will increase the FPS. So that's what we're gonna do. Now I only turned <laughs> that FPS adjustment thing a little, okay? So we were getting about what? Three, three, five, something around that. I'm not too sure, but you can always look back. In fact, I'll tell you because I'll be looking at it during the edit. So I'll just do a voiceover. And I can confirm about three, three, five FPS before I made the adjustments. 342.3, and you know what? And 342.3 again, that's excellent, the consistency. <laughs> well, that is true testimony because I only turned it a little. I didn't wanna go all the way up because I'm not too sure if it will go above what we're legally allowed. So I'm gonna look into this a bit more because in the UK, as I've told you many times, we're allowed up to 370 if an airsoft weapon is capable of full auto. If it's semi-auto only or single shots, we're allowed up to a whopping 520. But yeah, I turned this adjustment just a little and the FPS has gone up just a little. I'll do a bit more research, I'll crank it right to the top and I may just drop the results on Instagram. So what are my initial thoughts about this KWA Ronin TK45C, the Tekken? Well, it's a solid piece. A lot of it is strong polymer, but the main receiver and the trigger and of course, the key mod system, the barrel, outer and inner, the bars that the stock run on, that's all metal. But everything else like the magwell, the mag, the grip, the stock, that is all polymer. Oh, and of course, the rail on top and the integrated rail on the lower is all metal. Now, both of the sights are polymer, but there are elements of metal in there. But in terms of how they perform and what they look like, I still think they're quite nice, even though they're not full metal sights. Overall, I'm very impressed with the rate of fire. I am impressed with how this thing performs, but this is just an initial look at this piece. 
But the one thing that really gets me with this particular model, and it kind of reminds me again of the Honey Badger, you really are limited for battery space. You really are. Don't matter what people tell you, you're limited. So that battery that I showed you earlier, the longer one that fit down there, pretty much anything that you can buy for the Chris Vector, and isn't it ironic, the Chris Vector is very similar. You have to have a specific size battery to fit in the Chris Vector. If you can get a battery to fit in your Chris Vector, it will fit in this bad boy. So take that as a sort of a benchmark. Same with the Honey Badger, if you can find a battery to fit in that, it should fit in this TK45. Now there are two versions of this, you can go to the SweetAirSoft.com website and see both, I'll have both links down in the video description, and that little sneak preview I gave you of the ARP9, there's also a link down there too. Thanks again to SweetAirSoft.com and thank you for watching another Airsoft Mic video.